I'll invite uh, Carol to come off of mute as we begin with our greeting. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed, alleluia. The love of God poured into our hearts, the saving grace of Jesus Christ and the abundant life of the Holy Spirit be with you all. As we turn in faith towards rehearsing to being uh, in person uh, together again eventually, one of the things that we're rehearsing is uh, learning how to do music things without singing. So one of the things that we're doing uh, for the last couple weeks and we'll be continuing to do for the next several weeks is learning the words to a new Gloria. And last week you heard them, this week I will screen share them so that you're able to see them as well. And we will uh, speak these words together as our opening hymn of praise. Glory to you, Lord, for yours is the earth. Yours the hosannas, the dying rebirth. Ours the rejoicing for nature reclaimed. Ours the thanksgiving to your holy name. Ours be the telling of deeds greatly done. Yours be the glory, O Lord, yours alone. Amen. Let us pray our prayer of the day. O Lord Christ, good shepherd of the sheep, you seek the lost and guide us into your fold. Feed us and we shall be satisfied. Heal us and we shall be whole. Make us one with you for you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. As is our practice uh, following our readings today, we'll be invited into breakout rooms to share with one another how God might be speaking to us today. So notice what word, image, or phrase stands out for you in each reading. The first reading is from Acts, the fourth chapter. The next day, the leaders, elders, and legal experts gathered in Jerusalem along with Annas, the high priest, Caiaphas, John Alexander, and others from the high priest's family. They had Peter and John brought before them and asked, by what power or in what name did you do this? Then Peter, inspired by the Holy Spirit, answered, leaders of the people and elders, we are, being exam are we being examined today because something good was done for a sick person, a good deed that healed him? If so, then you and all the people of Israel need to know that this man stands healthy before you because of the name of Jesus Christ, the Nazarene, whom you crucified, but whom God raised from the dead. This Jesus is the stone you builders rejected. He has become the cornerstone. Salvation can be found in no one else. Throughout the whole world, no other name has been given among humans through which we must be saved. The second um, reading, get my, um, during the Easter season, we'll be um, saving the appointed psalm for our weekly Compline service on Wednesday evenings at 8.30 on Facebook. And since the Psalms were the original songbook for God's people, we will explore a different hymn as um, one of our Sunday morning readings focusing on the words. Today's, this week's hymn is from songwriter Adam Tice and is titled, God Bestows on Every Sense. Um, the hymn today was uh, chosen in connection with this week's celebration of Earth Day honoring the gift of our home, the earth, and how God cares for and speaks through the natural world. Its message of hope also especially um, spoke to me during this past week as I read it. Uh, it's a rhyming poem, so I'll try not to make it sound uh, too sing-songy. God bestows on every sense beauty as hope's evidence signs of what the earth will be just beyond 
what we can see. Catch a fleeting glimpse of grace in an unexpected place, just a taste, the smallest crumb of the banquet yet to come. Vibrant pictures in our dreams brushed with crystal color schemes vanished from a waking mind, leaving just a trace behind. In a burnt and blackened field, broken ground begins to yield tiny, fragile sprouts of green, hints of forest yet unseen. God makes all creation new, turning back what people do, building up what we destroy, singing sorrow into joy. Our next reading is from um, the first letter to John, the third chapter. This is how we know love. Jesus laid down his life for us and we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters. But if someone has material possessions and sees a brother or sister in need but refuses to help, how can the love of God dwell in a person like that? Little children, let's not love with words or speech, but with action and truth. This is how we will know that we belong to the truth and reassure our hearts in God's presence. Even if our hearts condemn us, God is greater than our hearts and knows all things. Dear friends, if our hearts don't condemn us, we have confidence in relationship to God. We receive whatever we ask from him because we keep his commandments and do what pleases him. This is his commandment, that we believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love each other as he commanded us. Those who keep his commandments dwell in God and God dwells in them. This is how we know that he dwells in us because of the spirit he has given us. Last week, we began a new pattern of exploring our gospel acclamation through movement and rhythm and a spoken text, again, rehearsing for an eventual time. So again, I will call and you will respond. Uh, Keith and Phoenix will be your stand-ins and you can speak along with them. Here we go. Alleluia. Alleluia. Lord, to whom shall we go? Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to John, the 10th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. I am the Good Shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. When the hired hand sees the wolf coming, he leaves the sheep and runs away. That's because he isn't the shepherd. The sheep aren't really his. So the wolf attacks the sheep and scatters them. He's only a hired hand and the sheep don't matter to him. I am the good shepherd. I know my own sheep and they know me just as the Father knows me and I know the Father. I give up my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that don't belong to this sheep pen. I must lead them too. They will listen to my voice and there will be one flock with one shepherd. This is why the Father loves me. I give up my life so that I can take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I give it up because I want to. I have the right to give it up, and I have the right to take it up again. I received this commandment from my Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Alleluia. Alleluia. Lord, to whom shall we go? Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia. Alleluia. 
for our uh, mutual conversation this morning. Uh, of course, our first topic is the standard, what word, image, or phrase stands out to you in each reading? In other words, what connects you to that reading? And Karin is putting the uh, text into the chat so you don't have to remember the other questions. In the reading from 1 John, we heard, but if someone has material possessions and sees a sibling in need, but refuses to help, how can the love of God dwell in a person like that? As we celebrate Earth Day this week, how do our material possessions affect siblings in need nearby and around the world? And the third uh, potential topic, Christ the Good Shepherd promises to lead all his sheep, even those from a different sheep pen. How does Trinity Lutheran Church's mission and ministry participate in this work of reaching sheep not in the same pen? How can others hear the voice of Jesus the Good Shepherd in and through us? In John, 1 John 3, verse 16, we heard, Jesus laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for our siblings. Now, this may not be true for all of you, but at this point in the pandemic, I still struggle with productivity and focus. Just keeping myself fed and clean, some days seems to be about all I can do. It takes up almost the entirety of the day sometimes. So these words from the letter of First John feel like yet another thing that I know that I should do, but I'm not sure that I can do. Jesus laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for our siblings. But this laying down of one's life isn't some arbitrary test. It isn't the ticket that gets us access to God's love. Instead, this laying down of one's life has a purpose. It is for the building up of the community. It is an expression of love. And we have the example of what this can mean in Jesus, in the gospel. Jesus tells us that he lays down his life for his sheep and that he has the power to take it up again. And in this Easter season, we recognize that power as the power of the resurrection and uh, the ability of God to create a way where there appears to be no way of bringing life where death appears to reign. Now, we ourselves don't have that same power to resurrect ourselves. So that is part of the difference between the way Jesus lays down his life and the way that we are invited to lay down our own lives. But that's where the Holy Spirit comes in. We don't need the power to do anything. We don't need the power to resurrect ourselves. We don't need the power to make the choice to lay down our lives. We have been gathered by the Holy Spirit. We have been gathered by into this particular community, and we have continued to be nurtured by the Holy Spirit within this community. This power to lay down our lives is gifted to us, and we are nurtured into being able to receive that. And we recognize that we have laid down our collective life 
in this particular way. The fact that we are continuing to center our worship life online rather than in person is a sign of that uh, voluntarily giving up of our lives, giving up the life that we thought we needed in order to protect one another and to protect our neighbors. And that is where the Holy Spirit comes in. The Holy Spirit is part of this gathering online, this continuing nurturing of the community, even in ways that we didn't think that we could be nurtured. And so we continue to experience the resurrection power of Christ through this giving up of our lives, through this being gathered in this particular way. Thanks be to God. Amen. For our hymn of the day, we turn in our cranberry colored hymnal to number 587. There's a wideness in God's mercy. We sing this to a couple different tunes. Uh, this week, the more kind of plaintiff tune was the one that was uh, was calling to me. So we're, we're singing this one with a greater sense of longing, which I think uh, sort of uh, resonates with both these scripture texts and with uh, our own lives in in light of various events happening in our secular world so i will invite you to turn to number 587 there's a whiteness in god's mercy i will also screen share this one's also kind of wide and a weird shape so if you need to uh move things around <laughs> please do so There's a whiteness in God's mercy like the whiteness of the sea. There's a kindness in God's justice which is more than liberty. There is no place where earth's sorrows are more felt than up in heaven. There is no place where earth's feelings have such kindly judgment given. There is welcome for the sinner and a promised grace made good. There is mercy with a Savior. There is healing in His blood. There is grace enough for thousands of new worlds as great as this. There is room for fresh creations in that upper home of bliss. For the love of God is broader than the measures of our mind, and the heart of the eternal is most wonderfully kind. But we make this love too narrow by false limits of our own, and we magnify its strictness with a zeal God will not own. Tis not all we owe to Jesus, it is something more than all. Greater good because of evil larger mercy through the fall. Make our love, O oh God, more faithful. Let us take you at your word, and our lives will be thanksgiving for the goodness of the Lord.
Alive in the risen Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God, who promises to hear us and answer in steadfast love. Loving shepherd, you know your own, and your own know you. Your voice calls us to your loving embrace. Strengthen your church throughout the world that we bear witness to your expansive love. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Gracious shepherd, you are generous with the gifts of goodness and mercy. Restore your creation to wholeness so that cities and towns, countryside and wilderness may abound with life. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Hope giving shepherd, the nations and peoples are your heritage. Place into the hearts of all leaders and rulers the passion to serve. Crucify any desire to overpower others and give leaders joy in lifting up the lowly. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Abiding shepherd, your love flows as we reach out to those around us. Move us with your spirit so that we lay down our lives for those in need. Help us love one another in truth and action. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Saving shepherd, you restore us to wholeness. Help our Trinity community and our life together apart and give us vigor as a people of faith. In the midst of challenges and opportunities, fill us anew with your Holy Spirit. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Eternal shepherd, you hold us securely in your loving hands. In the assurance of resurrection hope, we remember our loved ones who've died in you. Bring us with them to dwell in your house forever. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. In the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. In preparation for the work to which we are invited in the days to come, there are some announcements. Uh, first of all, uh, following worship right here on this uh, Zoom meeting, um, we will gather for a quarterly update from our council. So uh, stay tuned at the end of worship so you can hear uh, from our council. Then uh, next week in lieu of coffee hour, we will have the first in a two-part congregational conversation um, it will start around our current mission and ministry and uh, narrow pretty quickly into conversations about our worship life and uh, then into some details uh, from there. Uh, Karin, anything to add about uh, the first session on May 2nd? Yeah. Um, so it's important as we're talking about our worship life that we start from a place of understanding um, who we are and what's important to us. So eventually we'll talk about some specifics about, you know, perhaps our instruments or perhaps um, issues of continuing hybrid worship, that sort of thing. But for now, for this first conversation next week, we'll be talking about um, who we are and the sorts of uh, ministries that are important to us and how that will inform our decisions about our worship life and the things that are important to us, the things we want to prioritize. Um, you'll have seen me mention things like that in my last several newsletter articles. My next newsletter article will be about this as well. So we'll be able to ask these questions together and have more direct conversation about them both this next week on the 2nd and then on the 16th of May, we'll use some of the answers we gather next week to have more specific conversation. Does that cover Good. it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Karen. All right. So hopefully you all will be part of uh, those conversations uh, next week and then uh, two weeks after. 
Uh, our Compline continues on Wednesdays at 8.30, and uh, this week our psalm is the 23rd Psalm, so there are an abundance of uh, excellent hymns to uh, take that familiar psalm and uh, place it in our hearts in the way that music can. So I hope you will uh, join me on Wednesday on Facebook Live as we explore the 23rd Psalm as part of our Compline worship on Wednesday. Did I say Wednesday often enough? My goodness. Uh, go brain go. Okay, and then uh, good news to share with you. So last week, uh, I was a little off balance as we started worship, having discovered a water leak in our basement. So soon after fixing, uh, well, I didn't do any fixing, but so soon after we fixed uh, the giant water leak that had plagued our buildings. So uh, John was able to come over and assess and things looked uh, perhaps bad uh, on initial assessment. And then he came back and uh, did a little more research and discovered it was not a big uh, leaky pipe. It was just a little leaky toilet and he was able to find and fix the leak. So thank you, John, for your work on that. And I figured since you all knew that we had the leak, we should uh, reassure you that it has been fixed. Uh, any other announcements for the good of our community today? We are in need of volunteers to man the tab room on Friday. So if you can help with that, contact Tanya in the office so she can get you on a volunteer list. And it'll be up to you what Fridays you can help and, and all that stuff. But we would like to have at least three people working in the tab room uh, each Friday when we open. So that's, I just wanted to put that out there. So we we'll need volunteers, okay? All right, then I will send it back to Karen for our sending song. As we meditate on Christ as the Good Shepherd, it makes sense to have at least one shepherdly sort of uh, song in our worship life together. So today we're going to turn to number 789, Savior Like a Shepherd Lead Us. This will be familiar to many of us. Um, this particularly seems to make sense in light of uh, the conversation we'll be having with the council the, right after worship and in light of the conversation we'll be having about our mission and worship life next week. So we'll use this as our prayer, a, a collective gathered prayer, number 789. Bye. 
seek your favor, only let us do your will. Blessed Lord and only Savior, with your love our spirits fill. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, you have loved us, love us still. Blessed Jesus. Receive the threefold blessing. The God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing, so that we may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit through Christ Jesus, in whom there is life. Amen. May our glorious God grant you a spirit of wisdom to know and to love the risen Lord Jesus. Amen. The God of life, creator, redeemer, and sanctifier, bless you now and forever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ, Christ is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia. Go in peace, share the good news. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia.